With Intel's launch of 12th gen CPUs, they also released their UHD 770 graphics on board the CPUs, at least with the models that aren't the F models. So today we are going to be comparing this graphics to the Ryzen 7 5700G, which has its own onboard graphics, and also three budget GPUs that we featured in yesterday's video, mainly the Quadro K4000, which is a budget solution you can pull out of a workstation. But first thing is first, these graphics, Intel on their website has the 12600K coming in at 1.5. 4, 5 gigahertz maximum speed, then the 12900K benefits from an extra 100 megahertz going up to 1.55 gigahertz. Though what we're gonna also throw in is the DDR4 versus DDR5 results. Since on Z690 motherboards, some of them do support DDR4 memory, and then some of them support DDR5 memory. For the DDR4 memory, we're using Corsair Dominator 3600 megahertz CL18, but we have tuned this to CL16. And then on the DDR5 side, we're using, again, Corsair Dominator memory, and this is 5200 megahertz CL36. So let's get this comparison underway and give you guys the lowdown. If you're looking for a motherboard that supports the latest 12th generation LGA 1700 CPUs and you're cashed up, then today's video sponsor ASRock has you covered. With the Z690 Taichi, you get 20 phase VRM, PCIe Gen 5, as well as having reinforced dim slots and surface mount technology over your PCIe Gen 5 device. The final feature for the icing on the cake is the killer Ethernet E3100 2.5G solution and Wi Fi 6E AX 1675, which can be combined for the Wi Fi to handle background tasks and the LAN port to prioritize gaming packets. Links in the description below to find out more. Welcome back to Tech Yes yeah, City and the first title we're pulling up here is Age of Empires 4. Now all the titles we did test at 1080p low settings with 100% screen res, which I think is a good compromise between good performance and still getting a half decent visual experience. But in this title, the Ryzen 7 5700G really catapulted above all the other solutions here, but then the UHD 770 actually didn't impress at all getting quite low FPS numbers. And then the DDR4 versus DDR5 in this particular title did give a slight benefit to DDR5 memory. Though moving on now to Borderlands 3, and here's where there was no real difference between DDR4 and DDR5. Though I did notice that the 5700G did yet again win out this title, even compared to those three budget used graphics cards. And then going on to CSGO, this is where the 5700G actually came in middle of the pack. And then the UHD 770 graphics actually performed the best in correlation to the other games and also the other GPUs on display in this particular benchmark. Though the DDR4 versus DDR5, this is where we saw the biggest difference between these two types of memory, 112 average FPS versus 99 average FPS. The moving across to Fortnite, here's where we tested at low settings, though we do use that epic distance, which is what actually a lot of pro players like to play with. So if you wanna play uh, with a reasonably smooth experience, the Ryzen 7 5700G will provide just that. They use GPUs as well. They provided a decent experience. Then the UHD 770 graphics, again, falling behind in this title with suboptimal FPS. You will get what I consider a pretty poor experience in this particular title, coming in with 34 versus 37 FPS on DDR4 and DDR5. But I noticed that the DDR4 in this particular title did do better than DDR5. Though the final title to pull up in today's comparison is New World. And here's where we got some surprising numbers, or I should I say lack of surprising numbers, where with the UHD 770 graphics, this title just refused flat out to even let the game boot. So we couldn't even give you numbers on either DDR4 or DDR5 presenting the same message on both times. Though the Ryzen 7 5700G was successful in booting and that did provide the best numbers even versus the three used graphics counterparts. Though I do say if you wanna play this title, perhaps drop the screen resolution rendering down to 50% and you'll get a much smoother experience. Though the final numbers to pull up here today is the Firestrike Extreme Scores, which actually gives me a lot of insight into the Ryzen 7 5700G versus the UHD 770. And here's where we see the numbers on the 770 was coming in with 1,298 
and then 1318 on both DDR4 and DDR5. So there wasn't much of a difference there in this particular graphic score. Then the 5700G got 1914 points. So it's coming in with roughly 50% more points in this benchmark, but we could see with those gaming benchmarks that it actually came out ahead by a long shot, which does mean that AMD is definitely optimizing their APU solutions a lot better for gamers, and Intel do have some work to do here. Whereas we saw with CSGO, that's a best case scenario, where the 5700G versus the UHD 770 pretty much correlated to these Fire Strike Extreme scores, but then if we look at the rest of the games, the 5700G was just coming out well ahead. So basically summing up the UHD 770 graphics, it's time to give you guys my thoughts and opinions. And as we saw with that lackluster performance, Intel do need to do a bit more work, especially to even catch up to AMD. But I'd like to really see what AMD can do with their next generation APUs, especially if they couple it with DDR5 memory. I think we could see at that stage a true 1080p all games, decent settings, APU being finally released to the market. But as it stands with the UHD 770, I wouldn't personally bother with this for dedicated gaming. In fact, I'd just go and look for even a GT 1030 or a GTX 750 or even a Quadro K4000. It's going to give you a much better gaming experience than this onboard graphics from Intel. The one thing that Intel does benefit from is the ability to use QuickSync with their onboard GPU portion. So if you are looking for that particular feature, then it may be worth getting. Then when it comes to building a new PC, and if you're on the fence of, well, I can just get all the rest of the PC, but the graphics and just use the UHD 770 graphics for now, I think you're gonna be sorely disappointed if you try go down this route, where I just thought in all the titles with the exception of CSGO, the gaming experience was really suboptimal. And if you're building a new 12th gen system and you're thinking of just holding it out until GPU prices become more affordable and then you pop one in and this graphics solution will get you by, then I think you're gonna be getting very frustrated. And in fact, if you wanna go down this route, I would suggest going with the APUs from AMD. They performed phenomenally well, at least in the case of the Ryzen 7 5700G. Personally, I'd love to see AMD release the Ryzen 3 5300G to the masses instead of making it OEM only. Four cores, eight threads with a decent onboard gaming solution could really provide a great benefit to those who wanna get on the latest and greatest stuff and have a lot of upgrade options, but still not pay ridiculous prices for GPUs at this point in time. So the real tied by option at the moment is definitely coming from AMD and their APU solutions. And unfortunately for Intel and the UHD graphics, it's just not really an option in my opinion. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comments section below, what do you think of the UHD 770 graphics, especially versus the Ryzen APU solution? Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Mudib Atrides, and they ask, hi Brian, is it possible to flash a Quadro to a GeForce card? And here's where I'm gonna say, I have tried this in the past and I have failed miserably. So I just don't think it can be done. If anyone knows actually how to flash a Quadro card to a GeForce card, especially if you can then install GeForce drivers, I would love to know how to do that. But as it stands, I have tried this in the past and I just have not got anywhere. I was just met with block after block. It was just seemed like it was impossible to do since I do believe the Quadro cards are actually fundamentally different to begin with than the GeForce cards and that they actually have a few more things unlocked like FP64 performance. Anyhow guys, that's all for me today. If you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, make sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. And with that aside, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.